So if we want to add points to our spline or add points to mostly anything, we select it. Then we might say, I want to add an extra point here. So if we left click on the spline, it brings up this little pet palette. We then want to click on the one that says add new node to spline or has the plus symbol. That'll add a new point just where I clicked. And then once we've added it, then we can stretch that or move that or do whatever we want to it. We want to find a happy medium between having enough nodes and having too many nodes. If we have too many nodes, it makes it a not a very nice curve. If we don't have enough nodes, it makes it hard to control. Once we've drawn our splines, we now need to define them to our mesh. What are we drawing? We're drawing contours. So we talked about what is a contour. A contour is a line which defines that the height is consistent all along this ridge or all along this line. As opposed to a spot level, which means the height of that ground is only that height at that one place. So in order to define these splines to our mesh, we want to select the mesh, select the mesh tool, and then we're going to use our space bar, which is our magic wand. When we click or hold our space bar down, it turns into a magic wand. Now when I hover over my contour line, my spline line, we see that it turns blue and that's very important. If it's not turning blue, it's not doing what we want it to do. If instead I miss my line and I'm hovering over just the mesh, we see that the mesh turns blue and that's bad. If the mesh is turned blue, we're going to do the wrong thing. So we have to make sure that the right thing is selected, is identified. So let's do that again. We're going to hold spacebar, hover over a spline line and then we're going to left click. When we left click it brings up this box and says what do you want to do? We want to fit to user ridges. Press OK and what does it do? It creates new nodes. It creates new nodes and this time the nodes aren't on the spline but the nodes are actually on the mesh. So what we're doing with the spline is sort of just temporary. We're using the spline as formwork in order to create contours on the mesh. Now you can see that the way that this has happened, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven additional nodes. There's one on each end, and then along the spline, it's created dots. But we can see that it's no longer a beautiful true curve. It's created straight lines. Because again, that's what ARCHICAD does. ARCHICAD's going to create triangles or triangulation of the site. Now I've currently got this mesh set to all ridges smooth. If I change that to all ridges sharp and then I created some more of these meshes and I added heights to them, what we'd see is that we start to create triangles. So we'll leave that as all smooth for now and then we'll come back to that later. So let's repeat that process. Select the mesh, select the mesh tool, magic wand, click, fit to user ridges. Again, it's done the same thing. Now, what if I wanted to add more nodes or add less nodes? If I go to design, magic wand settings, we see that I can change the way that the magic wand works. So we can change the setting of the magic wand by using a different option. So I can say apply the magic wand based on a deviation from the curve of less than 40, which is based on the best match system, or I can change to a linear segment system where I say I want you to break a arc or break a circle into so many parts, or I can say I want you to make sure that my segments or the distances between nodes is no longer than a thousand. So using this setting we can dramatically change how we place nodes 
onto our surface. So if we were trying to draw something very large, or if we were trying to draw something very small, we might want to change these settings in order to make it work the way that we want it to. I'm going to leave it as it was, using the best match setting and leaving that as 40 because I'm quite happy with this setting uh, but that is how we could change it if we needed to change it. Let's do this, finish it off now. So I've selected the mesh, I've selected the mesh tool, I'm going to magic one which is spacebar, left click on the spline and that's going to create new nodes on my mesh. So when I select the mesh we can see there's now all of these nodes and I could now get rid of my spline lines if I wanted to. I'm going to group them all together. That's edit grouping group. We can see there are keyboard shortcuts, command G or control G to group. I tend to not use a lot of keyboard shortcuts when I'm teaching because if I use too many keyboard shortcuts, yes. So if, if you want to understand that, so if you go to the, the arrow tool and then on that left hand side, top left hand side, yeah. There's three different methods of selection. So that means if we select just the edge of something, uh -huh. everything will be selected. Yeah. The second option is we must select the entire thing or it won't be selected. And then the third option is the AutoCAD method. If we select from left to right, you know, le left to right won't select everything. If we select, se select from right to left, it will select everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm going AutoCAD. Yeah, so people that are familiar with AutoCAD like that one. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. And like I said, with the arrows, if we click on the arrow tool, we see that there's a black arrow and a white arrow. <laughs> yeah. But no, there's this suspend this option. Uh, what you've got there is fine. You have to just wait for a second. Cool. <laughs> How's everyone going? We're going to take lots of breaks today because this gets pretty intense. Alright, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, because let's check this out, I always like the idea of going to 3D just to see where we're up to. So we've applied contours to the site, but when we check it out in 3D, so select right click, show selection marquee in 3D, we see that it's still flat. <laughs> the site is still flat, but there's lines on it. So there's like these rainbow lines on our mesh, but it's still flat. So we've defined the contours, but we haven't given a value, a height value to the contours. So that's what we need to do next. Just to explain this in a little bit more detail, if we don't want to see our splines, they're not actually helping us anymore. So what we can do is select our splines, press Control A or Command A, that'll choose all of our splines. Um, I've already grouped them. Once we've already selected and grouped them, we can enable that grouping by clicking this button and that means we can select them all in one go. If that's suspended, that means we have to select them all independently before we group them. That's edit grouping group. Of course I've already grouped them and that's why they're yellow. If they're black that means they're ungrouped. If they're grouped that'll make them a colour. In this case it changed it to blue instead of yellow because there was already one that was yellow. So now we've grouped them together and if, that, if those are annoying us we can hide that line and that will mean that we're, they're not getting in our way maybe. So we could right click layer, hide layer and now we can see only the mesh and not the splines. So we need to give it a height value, which means we need to know how tall it should be. I'm going to give you some heights. These are RL, so these are reduced levels. And that's what we're going to use for this particular site, not AHDs, Australian Height Datum. So I just want you to uh, copy these across. I'm going to make a text box and I'm going to type in a, a number. And I'll do this in millimeters. Sometimes this will be in meters. You'll see this in meters because that's again, that's how a surveyor will work. But I'll just put this in millimeters for you and I'll use a comma 
just so it's more clear what I'm talking about. So 9,900, 9, so 9,900, make that just a bit smaller, it's a bit crazy big. And I'm going to press the wrap text tool, which just means it keeps this small. Do you want us to copy the text or just do it? I want you to probably copy the text first. I'm doing these as corner spot levels, um, and then once you've copied the text, you'll have this as a representation. It's a good idea to do this anyway, apart from just for this process, because we want this these numbers to represent on something like a site plan. So we want to keep this information for good, not necessarily just for what we're doing at the moment. So. Copy those. I'm doing four. And I'm doing five hundred millimeter increments. If a surveyor was providing us with this information, a survey, a detailed site survey, then we would be requiring it to be at quarter meter interval, so at least 250 millimeters, because that's what most councils require in order to be able to use that for a development assessment. We're going to keep this simpler just by doing um, half meter intervals. And so we've just written text, that's all we've done at the moment, and this text isn't defining our mesh, our mesh is still flat, but we're going to use this information in order to be able to know what to type to make our mesh be on the correct angle. So once you've typed in those numbers, then we want to use these numbers to define our heights. Now have a watch of this. We want to make sure that we get this right. Uh, this is not as tricky as trying to define the contour to the mesh, that's uh, a bit tricky, but we just need to get this one quite right. So when we select the mesh, we see that all of the nodes become active. We can see all of those black dots. Now I want to click on just to one of the dots on one of the contours. We're going to start from this one, 9,500. I'm going to click on that, and we see that now when I've clicked on that one node, everything else is turned off. Now we're dealing with only one contour. If I click again, my palette comes up and I will choose this one called Elevate Mesh Point, which is marked with the Z. Now I want to apply to all, because I want every one of these nodes on this contour to be the same height. And we change this to millimeters, just to make it easy for us to understand, but we're just going to type in that value. So 9500, I don't need to put in a comma. In this instance, I just did that for your benefit. Press OK, and we'll repeat that process for each one, 9000. Is there a right click on the node? It's all left click. Left click, left click. Type it in, press enter. 7500. Now we've applied all of our contours, but what haven't I done yet? I haven't done my edges. So if I now select my mesh and have a look at this in 3D, right click, show selection marquee in 3D, we see that it looks a little strange. It sort of looks right on in the middle on the top, but on the edges, it looks really, really wrong. So I need to remember that I need to do my corners as well. So how do we do the corners? That's why I gave you a spot level for the corner. So that means we click on each of the corners, left click, again the same way, but this time it's very important that we do not press apply to all. 
This time we only want to do one at a time, 9900. Zero, zero. And that's another reason why it's really valuable to do a mesh as a simple rectangle rather than a very complicated shape, even if your site isn't a simple rectangle. There's nothing wrong with you making a mesh bigger than your site. So I would recommend that. And by having a mesh that's bigger than our site, it also makes it easier to do shadow casting. So in this case, we've only done the mesh as big as the site. And so we're going to need to extend it or to do something else to our site in order to be able to see how we cast shadows onto neighboring sites. 9700. Zero, zero. Make sure you click on the right one when they're close together. 9200. Zero, zero. So zoom in as much as necessary. 8800. Zero, zero. Enter. That's it. So we've now defined all of our points again. Let's check out what we've done in 3D. Make sure it makes sense. Select. Show selection marquee in 3D. We now see that that looks correct. We now have a big blob of earth or a slab, a slice of our earth. If you're not quite sure um, how to edit the text, one of the very important parts of being able to edit text is making sure that you've got your quick selection method or your magnet turned on. If the magnet's not turned on, it's very, very hard to edit text. If the magnet is turned on, all we need to do is double click on the text and then allows it allows us to edit it. I also have been changing the scale without maybe talking about it. If I was to change that to 1 to 100, we see that that makes the text smaller. Now, of course, the reality is that the text is not changing size. It's just the scale in which we're viewing the project is changing size. So you can change the scale of the project in order to be able to adjust the settings. Of course, that doesn't make a lot of sense when we're in our 3D world it's mostly managed based on how we place it onto a layout. But in order to make the text bigger, we can either change the scale or change the size of the text. For a site plan, it's quite common that we might want to be using a 1 to 200 or maybe a 1 to 100 if it's not a very big site. And I would recommend that we always want to use text size 3 as a minimum, or of course we could go a bit bigger than that if we felt that it was necessary. Now, in order to select things faster, if I click on the A tool, the text tool, and then press Command A or Control A, that'll allow me to group it all together. Select it all in one go. We can group it together, and then if we wanted to change it to text size 3, we could do that. Now, we see that it didn't change the dimensions, because the dimension's a different tool. So if I do the same thing, Dimension tool, Control A, then that allows me to change that one as well. So what are we talking about? We're just talking about interactivity in Archicad, how to be able to make small changes, how to relate to the drawings, and to get it to create what we're trying to do. So we'll take a, a bit of a break once you've got that. I'll, I'll come and help you to get this done. And then we'll take a bit of a break um, because staring at screens is not a great idea for a long time. And I'm very, very aware that doing this sort of stuff in Archicad is quite taxing. I need a